since the last time I was on the Dr. Phil show. All leads had been exhausted. Tommy Hudson, Ebby's detective, left Little Rock Police Department and we were given a new detective who recently told me Ebby put herself in the drain. After he told me that, I was speechless. That's insane. That's when I just said, I'm done. I just closed the book on getting any more help with the Little Rock Police Department. He didn't say it was a cold case. It's gonna take someone coming forward because it's been investigated as much as it will be. People ask me if I believe we'll find Evie's killer. I used to say, yes, absolutely. Well, I got the best they can get me. Now I'm on my own. Dr. Phil has been very gracious in giving us exposure for Ebby's case. Dr. Phil is keeping Ebby's story alive. I'm here in Little Rock, Arkansas, investigating the mysterious death of Ebby Sepik. We're in Chalamont Park, and this is where Ebby's car was found. This is a picture of her 2003 silver Volkswagen Passat. What's interesting about the car is the fact that it was found um, with the key turned all the way in the ignition um, as if it had been left running. It was out of gas. All of her personal items were in the car. I'm pulling up to the parking space where Ebby's car was found. I find it interesting that her car was all the way in the back of the parking lot because it's in a spot that you can't see from the street. I think it's significant that the car was backed into the space. Even if someone pulled into the parking lot, anything that you're doing is gonna be hidden. Police had said that the remains were skeletal and that the pipe opens near where Stepik's car was found. Police now seem to be suggesting that she somehow crawled down there on her own. And that is not where the evidence that we have found has led us at all. I think it's really important to go down into that hole because I want people to understand how difficult it would be for someone her size and in her condition. She would have had to lift this manhole cover herself. And this is hard. It's super heavy. But she would then have to crawl down here and while balancing herself on a ladder, pull this back over. These rungs are very far apart. And they're, they're hard to see, even in broad daylight, by the way. Once you get down here, you can see that there's this pipe, this really small pipe, um, just a few inches wide, down at the bottom. The longer I spend here, the more I realize that it would have been basically impossible for Evie to get down here on her own. Evie's body was found down this drain pipe. She was over 70 feet in there. To demonstrate how absurd the idea is that she would have gone down there on her own, I'm actually gonna crawl down in there. It angles down in here, and it's so tight that if I go any farther, my arms, like, I'm not gonna be able to get out of here. Oh my God, it's very hard to back out. She would have had to have been all the way in the pipe because when they looked down in the manhole, they lifted the cover, and they didn't see her down here. After being down there, I can say even more definitively, I think there was no way that she could have gotten down there herself. I believe that this is a solvable case. After spending a lot of time in this park, I'm more convinced than ever that the person who did this to Ebby had to be someone who was very familiar with this area and knew it really well. It feels to me like something that wasn't planned, like perhaps a crime of opportunity, like someone saw her in her vulnerable state, took advantage of her, did something bad to her, and then just made sort of a panicked attempt to cover it up. I think that there is definitely one, possibly multiple people of interest here, and we need to find out why the stories aren't matching. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.